What is up, YouTube? Jamie the Kid Zero Zero here, coming to you guys with my very first draft of Shadows. Um, I managed to pick this uh, this deck up uh, two days ago, and I finally had a chance to actually sit down, look at the cards, and actually throw together some sort of build based on um, what I played against at um, the Brotherhood Open, uh, what I've been able to test online, and a couple of videos I've watched. I've literally been kind of brewing around what cards I like, what cards I didn't like, um, what I kind of wanted to do with the deck, what I wanted to include, and there's so many things you can put in. It's unreal. So uh, what I'm going to be showing you today is what I want to be called is what I would like to call the tribute summon version of the deck. Um, and then uh, the next version I'm probably going to bring you guys is the chaos version of the deck, which I'm actually really liking, but it's more of a theory brew type deck. This is the one which I'd be more comfortable taking to a locals immediately. It's the one I've been testing uh, already, and uh, it's been coming up pretty nicely so far. So uh, we're just going to get straight into the list. Um, we're going to, of course, as usual, do the extra deck second and do the main deck. First, I do not have a side deck at this time because I haven't even considered what the meta is going to look like, but it'll include a variety of things. But I do not know, nor do I want to share what's probably going to be in it at this time. So we're going to start off with two uh, Shadow Falco. Shadow Falco is one of my favourite monsters in the deck. Um, it has the simple ability of when he's uh, flipped summon. Sorry, when he's flipped, he can target a Shadow monster in your graveyard and special summon it in defense in face down defense position, which is crazy for all your Shadow pluses. Uh, and if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, by any means, uh, he is going to be able to special summon, his, special summon himself in face down to defense position, immediately priming himself to use his flip effect on the next turn. So Falco, very, very strong in my opinion. I really like his effects. Um, then we have uh, two copies of uh, Shadol Skormata. Shadol Skormata is mainly in here for your deck thinning. You will often be sending this card off of things like Sinister Shadow Games and um, Construct or Nephilim. Um, you'll be using this because of its, uh, uh, when this card, uh, you'll be using this because of its effect when it is sent to the grave by our card effect, it can then immediately send another Shadol card from your deck to the graveyard, so triggering any Shadol you may choose to, uh, send. And he's also very important to have in the grave, uh, for your Falcos, because Falco can reset this guy, and he has a flip effect which destroys any monster on the field, so he's really strong in that regard. So you almost always, if you can, want to prime this if you're gonna go for the Falco ditch. You want a Sinister Shadow Games for this, and then have this ditch Falco, so that when the Falco is set, you have access to the Skormata to immediately remove uh, potential threats. Um, I'm then going to move on to the three ofs. For the three ofs, we play three copies of Shadol Dragon. Um, I really like Shadol Dragon, but I really dislike its defense. But I suppose that is a balancing factor. It's a really, really big normal summon, which a lot of people seem to overlook. It's a 1900 normal summon drop, which is huge. And he has, uh, he has, of course, the standard two effects of um, Shadows. He has the flip effect, which uh, bounces any one card on the, uh, your opponent controls to their hand, that being a spell, trap, or monster. And it also has the effect of when it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can target a spell or trap card on the field and destroy it. That is so, so important with uh, Construct Nephilim. Um... And with your Shadol Fusion plays, because it just gives you a free um, back row destruction against some of the really potentially threatening cards which you can go up against. Of course, it's no solution for things like Shadow Mirror, but um, there's definitely a few things that helps you sort out. So, uh, the three Shadol Dragon. Uh, I'm then tentatively, tentatively testing three copies of Shadol Beast. Um, Shadol Beast is an incredibly potent card which gives you so much draw power, but it's also the fact that it's a level 5 that kind of makes me a little bit wary of it. You'll almost always find me special summoning this with a Falco if I have the ability to do so, and I will often send at least one on the first turn if I'm capable of doing so, simply because I want to thin them out of the deck. But there are cards later on in the profile that make three a little more valid, um, a little bit more usable. And then we're going to move on to the last Shadol monster in the main deck, and that is three copies of Shadol Hedgehog. Shadol Hedgehog is your Stratos of the deck. Um, it has two searching effects. When it's flipped, you can search a Shadol spell or trap, uh, card from your deck to your hand, so that is either going to be Shadol Fusion or Shadol Core, and 99% of the time it is going to be the Fusion. And when it is sent for the graveyard by a card effect, uh, you can add a Shadol Monster from your deck to your hand, except Shadol Hedgehog, which actually upsets me because I often want to add the Hedgehog to then set it to um, to get to a Fusion. But it's really nice, it combos really nicely with Falco because if you can flip Falco and then flip this. Um, in, of course, in separate turns, um, you can uh, search your Shadol Fusion and then make an uh, Armadies, which is really nice. So, like, opening Falco and Sinister Shadow Games means you're going to have Armadies, uh, Shadol Fusion, turn two. So, it's pretty nice. Uh, then, moving through to the non Shadol cards, I play three Mathematician. Mathematician, in my opinion, is more important than Armageddon Knight because, as of currently, it's not a super polymerization target in the mirror. It's, um, 
not a level 4, which means that mind control and things like hat is a little bit less valid for the hat players that are still playing it. Also, it has the effect, which is uh, when this card is destroyed by battle, it allows you to draw a card. There's literally no higher level darks that you want to send to the graveyard. Um, so... It's, in my opinion, it's, it's far superior to Armor Knight at the moment. And again, it lets you make um, Armor Ds with your Falco if you happen to have the Falco on the field. It's just really, really strong. And it gets even stronger in tandem with the Light I play. And that's uh, one Felice Lights, one Archer. Uh, Felice, I just really, really like for the fact that you can t uh, turn one, summon Mathematician, send the Felice, special summon the Felice, and uh, sync for Ar Arcanite Magician. And then, like, set Protective back row, and your opponent can't do anything. And you can then, uh, next turn, take the two counters off the Felice, destroy whatever cards they actually dare to set um, and then tribute the uh, the Arcanite Magician for either your um, Shadow Beast or one of the two Majesty's Fiend I play in the main deck. Majesty's Fiend is a card that I feel is very, very strong going into the new meta because the, in my opinion, the four main decks currently in the meta, or five, I guess, are Hat, Shadows, uh, it was four, sorry, Hat, Shadows, Satellanites, and Burning Abyss. Those are the four most popular things that I've seen at the moment. And this, this card is so potent against all of those uh, picks, so I just feel that Majesty's Fiend is really, really strong. And then, of course, the last monster I'm playing in the deck, because it is ridiculously powerful and you can support it, is one Black Luster, Black, uh, Black Luster Soldier, Envoy of the Beginning. He's so, so strong, and I think he's a really ridiculous card, but if you can play him, you really should be playing him. So, some of you may be thinking, how are you playing all these tribute monsters? There's not that much support for them. I mean, you have pretty floaty cards, but you're going to have trouble with them, right? Well, normally you'd be right, but we're going to check out the spell uh, section and that maybe will change your opinion a little bit. So for the spells, I play uh, one Foolish Burial. This card is basically Rota. Um, if you open this, you can go uh, Foolish Burial for your Skomata, and Skomata can send Hedgehogs. You can search any Shadol monster to your hand, or you can use it to set up uh, the Skomata Falco turn one play, which is really nice. You can use it to set up so many things, so Foolish Burial is so, so important in the deck, so that's why it's a... That's why it's a CP super. Uh, t uh, sorry, a TU super. It's got to be beautiful if it's a good card. Uh, I've been playing one Allure of Darkness. I can't find my Ultra at the moment. Um, but it's just such uh, such good draw power. Really good hand modulation for getting rid of some of the dead cards in hand. I mean, as I said, we do play uh, three beasts. So sometimes the Warclog in hand and the Allure comes in handy for those situations for the three beast. And then playing Double Forbidden Lance. Um, you want to protect things like uh, things like Construct. I I'm going to call it Construct and Nephilim. Because that's the you know some people won't have read the new TCG names yet. Um, so the two lances there mainly to protect the construct, but it also protects your winder from things like compulsory evacuation device and um, Phoenix Wing Wing Blast, and in some situations the dimensional present as well. You really want to be protecting that winder. So I feel like it's a very very important card to be playing. Also breakthrough skill is a very very powerful card against winder at the moment. So you want to have the lance possibly for that situation as well. Um, then the card which makes the Monarchs a lot more valid, well not the Monarchs, but the Tribute Summonable um, Monsters more valid, and I've given the game away now, is the two copies of Monarchs Stormforth that I'm playing in the main deck. Um, the Monarchs Stormforth is something that I'm, I'm testing. Um, I am tempted to take out these and the Majesty's Fiends for the Chaos Dragon engine, but at the moment I, 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 I'm, I'm fine with these. I just really like the Monarch Stormforth because it's very, very strong at shifting some of the uh, more awkward monsters in the game right now, especially in the mirror match at shifting windows and things like that. You can use it to tribute them away and tribute set your um, beast or tribute summon your... Um, Majesty's Fiend. It's also very important against all of the Shadol sets because they are treated as being tributed for a tribute summon. They're not being sent by the Mark Stormforth, so all of the set Shadols won't get their effects. Um, it's really nice on some of the more committed things like um, Satellanite, I can't remember, it's, uh, Deltaros. Um, it's pretty nice against some of the Yang Zing stuff. That's what I forgot to mention. Uh, Yang Zings was another, another thing that Majesty's Fiend just shuts out completely. I really like Majesty's Fiend there. And it's also really important against the hands, which are a very big thing at the moment, in the hat deck. So, that's the two monarchs on fourth, they put in a lot of work. Um, and then going to move on to the three copies of Shadol Fusion. A very, very powerful card, but it's very easy to play around in my opinion. Um, if you're playing against Shadols, you should do everything in your power not to uh, make, an ex make an extra deck monster, unless you can deal with the subsequent Shadol Fusion and the pluses they're going to set up from it. So, uh, that, is what it, that is why I chose to play Hat, the recent Brotherhood Open, and... Um, there was not one occurrence where my opponent activated this card and sent from the deck. Not once. And I played three matchups, and I went to game three in all of them, uh, except for the one that I was featured in. There was not a single situation in which they managed to send from the deck. So, using this card to force minuses is pretty cool. Um, and that rounds off the spells. Um, that's all the spells I chose to play. Like, I want to play loads of other things, but there's just no room. This is 40 cards at the moment, and I'm trying to keep it as low as possible to keep it consistent. But, that's that. 
For the traps, I play uh, Double Vanity's Emptiness. Having this in one of your fusions is so, so strong, especially if you just have an Emptiness and a Winder, because Winder is so indestructible. Having the Emptiness and Winder almost always wins you the game, because they can't even, like, then big drop stuff. Um, so, Emptiness is really nice. Uh, I'm then playing three copies of Sinister Shadow Games, but I only have one at the moment. This is from my DN list. Um, Shadow Games is the single best trap in this deck. 100%. Shadow Games lets you do so many crazy things, and the sooner you open this, the better. I can't describe how good Shadow Games is, so you definitely need to be playing this card at three, um, and I really need to hunt down the other two that I'm going to require. You can just make some crazy, crazy setup plays, especially with things like Falco, sending the targets to the grave and setting up the Falco. Uh, like, if you have a set Falco, you can send any target to Grave, flip the Falco, get it, uh, get that target out. My favourite play to do with this is actually to, um, uh, set Falco, set this turn one. Um, and then in my opponent's end phase, if they didn't attack my Falco, Shadow Games, the Falco, face up and send a Hedgehog. Um, the Falco will then special summon the Hedgehog. Um, you can then go into your turn, flip the Hedgehog, search Shadow Fusion, and then, uh, Synchro into Armadies. It's just really, really nice. Um, and then I play uh, six one-offs in the form of one Shadol Core. This is just really nice um, for when you're forced to Shadol Fusion um, without actually having, uh, without your opponent having an extra deck monster on the on the board. Um, it basically means you don't use the Shadol Fusion. You just make you uh, you get this. You don't use one of your monsters, and it gets you the Shadol Fusion straight back out of the graveyard. So Shadol Core is just really really nice in my opinion. Um, I then play one breakthrough skill. Um, there's so many things you want to break through, uh, especially Dweller. The, one breakthrough skill is kind of in there as a utility. Uh, one CED, I just really like compulsory at the moment, um, especially in the mirror and against some of the other big um, Xyzes like Delta Rose. Uh, one bottomless, really, really strong. Uh, I wish I could play time space as well, but there's no room. Uh, one torrential tribute, because blowing up your board is fun when all your monsters get their effects. And then um, one solemn warning, because it's still one of the most powerful traps in the game, if not the most powerful trap. So why not play it? The extra deck is actually pretty cool. It includes all three of the main colors of extra deck monsters that you can play. So, we're going to get straight into the extra deck. Um, we're going to be starting off with two copies of El Shadol Construct. El Shadol Construct is um, unique in the Shadol lineup at the moment, as it's the only light and non-spellcaster Shadol in the deck currently. Um, Shadol, El Shadol Construct is incredible, because you can make it with one Shadol monster and one light monster, of which we play four lights, um, which are pretty easy to come by actually, and of course we play the core, which you can make um, uh, make into any element or any any uh, attribute. Sorry, um, and it's it's got some crazy good effects. Um, its first effect, it's got three, is um, if this kind of special summoned, you can send a Shadol card from your deck to the graveyard. So you can be sending anything. You can send a Dragon to destroy a back row. You can send uh, Falco to increase your board presence, you can send Beast to get a draw, Squamata to thin the deck and then get anything else. You can do so many things with this. Um, it's just really, really strong in my opinion. Uh, its second effect is um, if this card if this card battles a special summon monster, destroy that monster. Um, it's it's crazy. Sorry, at the start of the damage step. So it's Catastor for any special summon monster, which is huge against some things. It just destroys so many strong things and it doesn't target because it doesn't use the word target. And then finally, its other effect is, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one Shadol spell trap card in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So it can get you back any single one of your Shadol spell traps. It cannot miss timing, and it's a catastrophe for any special summon monsters and foolish burials a Shadol when it comes out. It's insane. It puts in so much work. Um, and then actually playing uh, three copies of something that I've not seen anyone else play three of at the moment, and that's uh, El Shadol Winder. And the reason why I'm playing three copies of this, other than uh, being recommended by a friend, um, is the fact that it cannot be destroyed by an opponent's card effect. Bugger the rest of its incredible effect, which is each player can only special summon uh, monsters once per turn, and the fact that it also gets um, a Shadol uh, spell or trap out of the graveyard when it dies, similarly to Construct, the fact that it cannot be destroyed by opponent's card effects makes it a hugely powerful stick. It's a 22 stick, which is really, really big against a lot of things at the moment. It has the stun effect, which is fairly hard to stop. And it's so, so, so hard to remove from the board. Um, if you have the right protection from it, and that is why I play the Lances, you should not lose the Winder if it's on the, if it's established on the table. And there are so many situations in which I'm able to um, shut all fusion for Winder. Um, 
and set up a, a monster next turn and then tribute summon uh, a Majesty's Fiend. And if you can get wind of Majesty's Fiend, you should win the game from there on in because it's just so so such a strong board. But yeah, I play um I play five of the Shadows. Um, I didn't feel the need for the third construct at the moment because um, I don't play as many lights. If I played the Chaos version of the deck, I'd probably play the third construct. But at the moment, I don't play that many lights. But three window, in my opinion, is a must because you don't really have many ways to recycle the fusions back to the extra deck. So you're going to want to have access to them. It's, and also, um, it's important because if Winda is finished chained, um, you can then uh, should all fusion the Winda away and another um, and another should all monster get that should all monsters effect and Winda will get you the fusion spell straight back to your hand. So you want to play that for that reason, and then you get a new Winda or a construct um, to uh, play around that finished chain that's just been flipped. Uh, moving on to the Synchros, I play the one Armadies, very important in the mirror and against hands, um, so that explains itself. Uh, one go your Guardian because it's stupidly good, it's a 28 stick that you can make with, um, uh, I forgot its name, Falco and either Dragon and, um, sorry, Dragon or Squamata or Lizard. Um, I then play one HTS Sahemoth, um, Sahemoth is a big hand or it's a big DD Warrior Lady for dealing with threats that the deck otherwise cannot deal with. Um, normally, in situations where you're going to be making this, you can be going uh, Falco get Dragon, flip the f um, flip the Dragon, um, bounce a card, and that should deal with the problem. But if you if that still can't deal with the problem, then HTS Sahemoth is the card for you. Um, I then play two sevens in the form of Black Rose Dragon because nuking the table is fun, and one Arcanite Magician, as I said earlier about the opening play, and then the last um, Synchro play is one Leo because you can make it with um, with Construct and Falco. And um, Construct will uh, get its effect, so it's pretty nice. And then finally, um, I play four Xyzes. Yeah, I just play four rank fours because, in my opinion, they're the strongest Xyzes, and you should hardly ever Xyz in this deck. But I play one E Knight because nuking the table is fun, as I said with Black Rose. Uh, one and one and one because um, there are some special summon monsters you just have to remove, and it's a really strong float. Uh, not floater, but survivable card. Um, one Castell because it's an out to almost anything, basically. Um, just by spinning a card, it's so, so strong. And I then play one level chain because anything this sends will get its effect. Long story short. So yeah, guys, that rounds off the actual um, deck profile. Um, I'm sorry it's been such a long video, but I wanted to kind of explain some of the uh, some of the theory behind my picks. Um, I'm really hoping to actually be able to come to you guys with another deck list um, shortly after this one, um, possibly maybe a few days later. Playing some of the Chaos Dragon elements. I'm a big fan of what Dual Rock 88 has been doing with... Um, his uh, ideas for, I've forgotten his name, Parsec, the inter Interstellar Dragon. Um, so I'm definitely going to have a play around with that, try some of those ideas out. But otherwise, yeah, that brings me to about the end of this video. I hope you all have enjoyed. I hope this has given you some insight into your lists. Please give me any of your feedback you wish to leave me in the comment section down below. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more of the same. And feel free to share this to all your friends if you reckon they could benefit from seeing the list because my shares have been going down recently. Otherwise, hope you have a wonderful day. This has been Jamie with the Kids 00. I'll see you guys next time with some more Yu-Gi-Oh! related content. Peace out. Bye-bye.